This evening, I'm going to share three short pieces that were written at the beginning of the 20th century, one by Rachmaninoff, another by Ravel, and a third by W.C. Beyond being written during the same era, it's important to note that all three composers were also fine pianists. And you can hear them honing their craft in these works by creating intricate textures and colors at the piano. All of these keyboard ideas are unique, but also idiomatic to the keyboard, so that they fit underneath the pianist's hands. I think that these three works reach a sort of pinnacle where musical expression meets virtuosity.
Hi everyone, I'm Larry Todd and I'm delighted to talk to you for a few minutes about the piano trio of Clara Schumann and G minor opus 17, which is being performed by my wonderful colleagues Yeva, Xiaomei, and Karen. Uh, in her time, Clara Schumann was known as one of the great pianists of the 19th century, and she had a truly international career. Uh, she concertized throughout Europe. Um, she went to England several times. She also um, went as far as, as Russia, and she became, at an early point in her career, the um, Kammer Virtuosin, or the chamber music virtuoso, to the Austrian emperor. She was born in 1819, um, so she was uh, nine years younger than Robert Schumann, who would marry her in 1840, um, and nine years younger than uh, Chopin, ten years younger than uh, Mendelssohn, and she lived until 1896, so made it through just most of the 19th century, and by the time she died, um, it really was the autumnal stage of Romanticism, Modernism, and a host of other isms who were beginning to alter the musical landscape of Europe. She made her debut in Leipzig in, uh, at age nine, so that would have been 1828, and after that uh, she quickly became established as one of the truly great pianists. This was at a time when there were all sorts of virtuosos on all sorts of instruments crisscrossing Europe, trying to establish careers. We usually think of Liszt as at the forefront of this because of the way he revolutionized piano technique, we think of Chopin, but there are many, many others. And in her day, Clara Schumann was so arguably celebrated just about as much as these others. She's one of the first pianists, apparently, to play from memory, so that's another interesting aspect of her, of her performance career that it, it usually isn't talked that much about. Um, she had a formidable technique, a huge repertoire, um, and we know that she uh, preferred the music of Beethoven. Uh, one of her favorite pieces was the Archduke Piano Trio of Beethoven. That might have given her the idea to try to run at her own piano trio, which happened in 1846. So by this time, um, she had been married to Robert for six years. They married in 1840. They originally established their household in Leipzig. Um, their residence there is now um, preserved as a, as a lovely museum to both of the Schumanns. Um, but in 1844 um, and 1845, they left Leipzig and uh, took up new residence in Dresden. Robert um, was appointed the um, civic music director of Dresden, and um, so they set up shop there, and it was in 1846 that she composed this piano trio in G minor. Before trying the piano trio, she had mainly written piano music and also leader, including several songs with Robert. Um, and it's really impossible to understand her music, her career, without hearing or seeing it as being in dialogue with the career of Robert. And this holds true for both of them. That is to say that there are echoes in Robert's music of Clara's music and echoes of uh, Clara's music and Robert's music and vice versa. Um, there's one short example I'll, I'll just demonstrate because it's one that's not that well known, but it, it goes to the extent of how these musicians worked and how they composed and how they created. Um, many of you probably know the opening of one of Robert Schumann's most famous leader, uh, Im Wunderschöner Monat Mai. Um, in the lovely month of May, which is the first song of Dichterliebe, his great song cycle, Poet's Love of 1840. It begins with this piano theme. What you probably don't realize is that Robert took that theme from an earlier work of Clara Schumann, who had then Clara Wieck had composed a piano concerto um, in 1833 when she was only 14 years old. And in the slow movement of that piano concerto of Clara Wieck, 
we find this extraordinary passage. Similarities are so close that it cannot be coincidence. It's basically a quotation. Uh, Robert is quoting Clara's uh, piano concerto from 1833. And there are many, many other instances of this. She intended to dedicate this piano trio to Fanny Hensel, the sister of Mendelssohn. And as it happens, Fanny Hensel um, was writing her own piano trio, this one in D minor, another serious key, uh, which Fanny Hensel wrote in 1846 and 47, and then she died shortly thereafter. So Claire was never able to realize the dedication. Um, but there are two women composers in the 19th century who turned to chamber music, and there were not many. Um, we think of figures such as Louise Farenc, um, Amy Beach, uh, and some others. Um, the point is, is that they were trying to break into the larger forms and uh, Clara did that brilliantly in her piano trio. After Robert died, Clara was forced to resume her concertizing career. She was suffering from various ailments. Eventually, she would have severe hearing loss. Um, the other thing to point out is that the Schumanns had a large family. They had eight children. And of those eight children, uh, four died before Clara passed away in 1896. Um, she had uh, many, many difficulties to overcome. Johannes Brahms remained her very close friend, and um, he survived Clara by only a few months, passing away in 1897. Um, it was the end of the, in many senses of the word, of the great age of musical romanticism, even as uh, modernism, various types of modernism were beginning to make inroads into cultural landscape of Europe.